1st, 10.30 to 3.30. Uh, we are always needed for volunteers. For those who don't know, Open House New York is a citywide uh, initiative where uh, historical and land, uh, houses and landmarks basically open up their houses so people can tour. And uh, as we have a gem here in the corner, people want to come and check us out. Um, so volunteers are needed, and there's a sign-up page in the back uh, if you are interested in helping out. Uh, we also ask that you keep in your prayers Marcelina Astonitas, who is Carlos Pesantes' mother, Philia Banks, Christopher Craig, Karen Del Greco, Richard Falotico, Cindy Herendeen, Noriko Iwamoto, Patrick Lazar, Kevin McGrath, who is a good friend of Jackie Russell's, Jean Martin, Constance Raduk, Anne Sendanger, Zora Shia, and we are grieving the loss uh, of James Power, so we say a prayer for the family of James Power, and we pray for those in residential care including Hannah Basus and Millicent Fairworth. We're very happy to have Hannah Basus with us uh, today. <laughs> with us here in person and online and a special welcome to those worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. It's good Lord to be here, good to be gathered as the people of God, worshiping and listening for God on this day. Let us pray. O oh God of life and new life, we gather with hearts full of joy and appreciation for the beauty and diversity of your creation, for the beauty and diversity of all peoples, and for the beauty and diversity of those worshiping with us online and here in this house. Let your Holy Spirit be in us, over us, and all around us. Prepare our hearts to receive all you have for us today, and let everybody say, Amen. Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Please rise. Standing if you are able. We give thanks to the Lord for God is good. God's love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare God's praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who do what is right. Let us worship our God who blesses us with infinite love and abundant grace. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Let us turn now to our pilgrim hymnals, hymn number 68, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. Let us remain standing.
Please join me in the prayer of confession, and I will begin. We ask your forgiveness, O God, for all the ways we have failed you. And all you entrust to our care. Transform our hearts. And we might be forgiven. Be with us in this time of silent reflection. and be with us as we sing. As we said together in the call to worship, God blesses us with infinite love and abundant grace. In Christ we are forgiven. In Christ we are free. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share with each other a sign of peace. Well, hello, everybody. The first lesson today comes from Psalm 106. Uh, if you want to read on, it's, uh, well, it actually starts on page 557 in the Red Bible or page 686 in the Black Bible. Again, it is Psalm 6. I'm going to read verse 6 and then 19 to 21. Okay. Both we and our, and our ancestors have sinned. We have committed iniquity have done wickedly. They made a calf at Horeb and worshipped a cast image. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox that, ate, that eats grass. They forgot God, their Savior, who had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and awesome deeds by the Red Sea. Therefore he said he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen one, stood in the breach before him to turn away his wrath from destroying them. And then our second lesson comes from Isaiah. It's, uh, if you are reading along in the Red Bible, it's page two, 652. In the Black Bible, it's page 798. Um, and uh, it is chapter 25, verse 1 and then 4 through 9. Okay, so chapter 25, verse 1 and then 40, then 4 through 9. 
O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. Okay. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm, and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of the clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear, and he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from, the, from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all of the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. And today we actually have a bonus lesson, lesson, an, ex, an extra lesson, which is Psalm 23. And it is found, if you want, uh, in our green on page uh, 181 in our green hymnal. Let us all turn to our green hymnals. Oops and we'll, we will sing together the refrain. my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in right paths for his name's sake shepherd Valley of the dark, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow to all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Be to God. I'd like to invite the kids up now. Please join me up front. Okay, let's come right up. Great to see you all. I know a number of our families are away this weekend, so it's wonderful to see you all. Now, Rob said a little something about it. Did you notice anything funny about our last Bible reading this morning? It was different, right? What, what was different? 
What did we do extra? We were singing along, right? Yeah, yeah. So some churches do that all the time. Our church does it sometimes when psalms come up in our Bible readings. Instead of just reading the psalms and listening to them, we sing it. Actually, Sonny, our music director, has put a lot of psalms to music. And you know what? People have been doing that for a really long time, like since before there was ever ice cream <laughs> or pizza, maybe since before there were ever pumpkins. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I'd have to check that one. But for longer than anybody can remember, ever since people started to gather for worship in special places, they loved to sing the Psalms. Why? I think because the Psalms, and especially this Psalm, Psalm 23, reminds people that God is with us, always. And it reminds people that God cares about us, always. And that's really special and important to remember. So like, even when you're sad, do you ever get sad sometimes? Sometimes. Or even when you're sort of like scared. Do you ever get sort of scared sometimes? Sometimes. Every day. And you're smiling when you say it. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> and you got family all around you, loving you. I bet even she loves you. Oh. <laughs> And here's the thing, and we sung about it, that even when we are sad and even when we are scared and even when we don't even know what we want, God is with us. God gives us strength and happiness and confidence all the time. Does that make sense? I hope so. And I think it's worth singing about. So anyway, now's the time to go to Sunday school. I want to thank Anna Marie and Betty, I think, is already there waiting for you. So go have fun. All right. Thank you, guys. Amen. And I'm going to move the hymnal. I think I'll, I can leave everything else there. All right. Good. Thanks. Now, I want to get right to it. What a week. And what a set of lessons for this week. The lessons we heard, even our bonus uh, lesson, and this is certainly a week we can use an extra lesson. These same lessons will be read in many church and sung in many churches across our nation and world as people gather and as people continue to suffer and to mourn in southwest Israel and Gaza and all around the world where there is war and strife, and as the world reacts to the terrorist killings in Israel and the military response, which includes, beyond killing, a blockade of food, water, and other goods. Our Bible tells us we are one. We live in a world, heck, we live in a burrow which shows us we are all one. And yet we, so many of us, don't want to know that. So many of us don't want to show that. I've been blessed in this week, which was terrible in so many ways, to be in contact with three of the dearest, smartest, and hardest working people in the clergy business. Right here in Forest Hills, uh, Rabbi Mark Kaiserman of the Reform Temple, of Forest Hills and Rabbi Daniel Graber of Forest Hills Jewish Center. The concerns they have, the stories they tell, just for their own people and families and all the suffering and mourning overwhelm us. And I've been in contact with Pastor Khadir Kadilia of St. John Redeemer Church in Brooklyn, who's also the national coordinator for Arab and Palestinian ministries for the Lutheran Church. 
just as with the rabbis. He and his people's connection to the suffering and the mourning is immediate and overwhelming. These are our dearest friends and colleagues, partners in ministry, each of them and all who they represent are our sisters and brothers. I hope many of you will be joining me at the service at the Reform Temple of Forest Hills tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. It's announced in our weekly words. If you need any more information, ask me or call the office or call them. I'll be presenting a reading and offering a very brief word on behalf of our church. And I hope to be with Reverend Kader next Monday, the week after this Monday, at a different event. Again, we are all children of God. God, who the Bible tells us, in God's own words, hears the cries of the people, all people. On this day, in this week, I'm struck by how you can quote our whole first lesson for today. This whole piece from Psalm 106 that we heard Rob read, and without any alteration at all, it just hits home. It's like it was written for us, for our nation and world, for this week. It says, both we and our ancestors have sinned. We have committed iniquity, have acted wickedly. They made a calf at Horeb and worshipped it. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox. They forgot God, their Savior, who's done great things. Wow. They forgot God, their Savior, who has done great things. Great things like like the whole of creation, like all of life. We're looking, as we've heard, we're looking at the biblical creation stories right now in our Wednesday Bible study series. Among the things we're seeing and discussing is how God makes us human beings in God's image. And, remember what else? God delights, it says. Delights says that in one of the creation stories. God delights in the whole human race, in all of its diversity. Why can't we? And that diversity itself is all wrapped up in God's image. You, me, the family over there that's walking into the Jewish center, the family over there that's walking into the Islamic center, all are made in God's image. You don't kill someone made in God's image, right? I guess that means you don't kill anybody, right? That's exactly what it means. But, as the psalm tells us, our ancestors sinned. And we have sinned. They exchanged the glory of God for the image of an ox. Sunday school, I learned about the golden calf. Calf, ox, tomato, tomato, who cares? They forgot about God, their Savior, and the Savior of the world, who makes everyone in God's image, and who delights in the whole human race. They gave that up. And who and what are folks bowing down to nowadays? Terrorists and extremists who twist God and the words of God into horrifying and brutal and ugly images and into this idol that they tell us is God, that has nothing to do with the God of creation who creates us all in God's image and loves and cares for all. What is it that has terrorists and extremists 
provoking violence and doing violence against others and twisting the deep and dear words and visions of their religions into a sick idol of death. Whatever it is, it's one stubborn ox being manipulated and fed by immoral, greedy, shameless leaders who have bought into a culture of death. A culture of death that leads to one thing, death. Leaders who speak disgustingly so in the name of God and claim to act disgustingly so in the name of God and recruit people to kill so disgustingly in the name of God and yet they've forgotten their God, traded God in for an idol, for death. And our selection for this week from the prophet Isaiah picks it up right there and tells us and reminds us who God is. You, God, have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm. Again, what an image as though written for this week. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm. When the noise of strangers like heat in a desert place. Again, you can't, I can't even say these sentences put down 2,500 years ago without starting to cry about what happened in this week. Strangers coming to a desert place. And we know the rest of the story. You, oh God, subdued the heat. When the ruthless were whipping up a storm and outsiders coming in and turning up the heat and killing, you, it says, you, God, and us, if we would but be the people of God, subdue the heat. The blast of the ruthless was stilled. The blast of the ruthless was stilled. The prophet's vision. Oh, how the ruthless are singing now in our world. Oh, how the ruthless love to sing and hear themselves sing. And oh, what a crying shame that people who think of themselves as people of God also like to hear the ruthless sing. It goes on. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food and fine wine. God's not for any of this that's going on. And when it comes to doing what God does, God's not settling for second best. Get the kitchen fired up. Cook up your best stuff and bring the wine list. And here's the deal. Everyone's invited. There's no bride side or groom side. There's no in and out. There's no litmus test. It doesn't matter what language you pray in, what word you use to call God. No, on this mountain, in this holy site, the Lord of hosts, which is a fancy stained glass way of saying the Lord of many, the Lord of a throng of all the world's peoples will make a feast. Of course, God made all people in God's image. 
course we should get together and have a feast. Well, what do we do? We fight. We fight on that holy mountain itself. We fight in the name of that holy mountain. And we fight when we should be getting together and feasting. And here's the thing. Food. (coughs) Gathering. The prophet tells us, as we heard God read, God will swallow up death. Forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and do we ever need that now? God is not about death, full stop. God is not about the culture of death, full stop. The love of God, the resources of God, the strength and power and comfort and love of and joy of God are for all people. We must never forget that. Let us always feast in body and mind and spirit. Let us always feast on and let us always share the love of God, the love and joy and care of God, which is for all. And let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Please stand when you're ready.
Let us pray. O God of love, O God of light, who creates us all in your image and cares for us all, we thank you that you call us to and for life, full life, together in your great creation. We thank you for the church and the gardens and for all that we do to experience and to share your love in and for the world. We thank you for all of our partners in ministry and the interfaith community who live out on a daily basis your love for all. Continue to bless all that we do as we bring healing and wholeness into our lives and into the world. And Holy One, God of light, we lift up our siblings around the world, in Ukraine, in Israel, in Gaza, everywhere where people have lost sight of you and are dealing in death. You hear the cries of your people. Change the hearts and open the minds of all leaders and nations and terrorist groups involved. Show us the way of life. Take us out of the culture of death. Wherever there is hunger, homelessness, and a lack of adequate health care, bring change to how we see and treat one another. Show us your way, O oh God. And we pray, O oh God, for all who are sick or recovering from illness and injury, including Philia, Christopher, Karen, Richard, Cindy, Noriko, Patrick, Marcelina, Jean, Connie, Ann, Suzanne, and Dora. We pray for Kevin and his family and friends. We pray for the Power family and all who are grieving, all who are grieving and suffering loss of any kind. We pray for all in residential care, remembering especially our sisters Hannah and Millicent. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O oh God, and hear us as we pray together, just as Jesus taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. All we are and all we have come from God, from whom all life and blessings flow. We respond by giving thanks and by giving back for our own good and for the good of the world. Thank you for supporting the work and ministry of the church in the gardens. The ushers will move among us. Shepherd, I 
shepherd he leads me beside still waters of rest the Lord is my shepherd he leads me along his righteous paths the Lord is my shepherd God of power and glory, we offer our gifts and pray for your presence in a world that is hurting and divided. Chaos, confusion, and anxiety are everywhere. The world desperately needs to feel your presence and glory. Today, we offer money while also pray for love and compassion. May your light shine throughout the world. And please turn now to your green sing hymnals, hymn number 246. You'll recognize this as the tune to Kumbaya.
Before our benediction, I want to remind us of coffee and donuts and fellowship set up in the breezeway. Set up in the breezeway, and then you can make your choice. Go outside and enjoy the sun and the chill, <laughs> or go down to the lounge. That's why I'm told we set it up in the breezeway. Your choice. Not our choice, I hope, whether to bring the love of God to everywhere we go. Not our choice. Or to put it another way, I hope and trust it is your choice. And I know and trust that God will go with you and go with us as we do as we sang. That we go out as God's family. We go out as the Lord's family set forth. And as we do so, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Amen. Dan Olson, thank you, Dan Olson, for joining on piano today. The man of many talents.